Hey guys, figured I'd put together a little video here of uh, how I assemble a helmet and uh, what's involved when I do one. Uh, as you've probably seen in my other videos, 95% uh, uh, of my helmets uh, I put together myself. Um, and they're all projects that take time, you know, getting all the parts together. I have a couple of game helmets, but they're, uh, they're obviously different. Uh, I enjoy putting them together and getting all the stuff. So this is what I use to... Uh, uh, put everything together. I have an adult speed um, pin in Dallas blue. Um, it's a large. I got the custom Montreal Alouettes face mask. It's a custom blue, a navy blue chin strap, set of decals, uh, team decals that I got, a uh, hairdryer, screwdriver, and my installation tool from uh, Rydell to help with, um, uh, you know, face mask removal. <clears throat> now, uh, the big thing when I do uh, a helmet is I want to make sure everything's even and straight. Um, you know, I've seen some helmets and stuff, decals are crooked and stripes are crooked. I mean, I understand, you know, when equipment guys do it or, you know, hobbyists do it, but I like to take time. And to me, the biggest thing is finding the reference point. Um, and, it, you know, there's enough things on the helmet that you can line it up where the decals will be almost uh, identically matched on each side. Um, especially with all the vents and grooves and everything that these newer helmets have. And it's pretty easy. On the old uh, VSR4s, you didn't have a whole lot of reference. That helmet was pretty round. Um, but I always like to pick a reference point. I look at a lot of pictures of the team and um, I'll... Uh, uh, you know, find something, find how they do it, uh, because sometimes year to year, even game to game, they change a little bit, but I'll, I'll try and find something that seems to be consistent that the team does, and um, uh, I'll, I'll do it. So I look at a lot of pictures, I uh, get a lot of pictures of uh, the helmets that I'm doing. Um, in this particular case, the reference point that I'm going to use is this top groove, because um, the, the decals here, the, the corner... I do it like that it's gonna go like that this top corner and this line across the top is gonna to basically go with this tape line so it's gonna look something like that when it's done and that's gonna be my only reference point and I've done it on both sides of the helmet so you can see so it should be symmetrical uh, little adjustments here and there I try not to pull decals or stretch them because that that will uh, um, uh, distort them a little bit where you should have straight lines now become wavy lines if you pull it too much so um, and that's where the hair dryer comes in because these these decals when they're you know at room temperature if you want they do get a little uh, uh, little stiffer so the hair dryer tends to make them a little bit more pliable and a little bit more usable so uh, that helps a lot same thing with the stripes I mean the stripes you, you usually have you know, a center mark and you've got the holes. So that's, uh, uh, you know, easy to line up. Uh, very hard with these new speed helmets with this ridge in the back to get the stripe to, to conform. They usually lift off a little bit. I'll try different things to try and make them stick. Um, but it's just, uh, it's the way the helmet's designed. I mean, I'm not sure what this ridge uh, actually serves in terms of safety, but it is a, you know, interesting design. So anyway. So the key is always make sure your, your surface is clean and um, so I'll, I'll just wipe it off real quick. I don't want any you know grime and, and I try not to touch the decals because fingerprint oil on the decal um, might make it lift over time. Uh, so I, uh, I, I make sure I'll use a little piece of uh, extra you know the, the wax paper that the decals come on. And I'll, I'll try to lift them with that. But the first thing I'll do is um, I'll usually do the, the center stripe first. So I'll start with that. I have the center stripes here. Got the blue. And then got the edge stripes. And they are three-piece stripes. Okay, so that's what it'll look like when it's done. Um, and again, I'll try to wipe the surface, make sure it's clean. Okay, move the front bumper and so it'll come right down and I try to get it as symmetrically lined as I can. So again, just have a quick wipe, make sure there's no grime or leftover polish or any wax that you may be using to, to shine the helmet. But you know, what, what 
definitely aids in the adhesion of these decals is a, a clean surface. Okay. So I'll just reposition a little bit here. I get the helmet ready and I like to do it obviously front to back. So it's going to be like that. I find the center point usually little things like you can see a little ridge there I put the decal halfway in between the ridge and some helmets following the center groove is relatively easy Do apply a little bit of pressure to pull back on the decal because that tends to make it sit a little straighter and if you need to just lift it readjust it basically fall with all these contours just make sure it's going on straight and with, like I said before with these ridges it is an interesting design and a bit of a challenge for these stripes to get them on straight because they do tend to lift a little bit we just have a bit of patience trim them off or just fold them underneath. I'll, I'll just fold it off. I'll trim it off later. Okay, so there's basically a straight center stripe. And in the back I'll now add a little bit of hair dryer just to heat up the decal. Heat up the heat. We do. I do this right away because it helps later on, it helps keeping it stuck down. And invariably in the majority of speeds that I have, they do lift in the back anyway, there's not much you can do. I've tried to apply some clear tape or some extra glue underneath, but you know, it is what it is. Second stripe. Try and get it lined up right, right up against it. And you can feel with your thumb here, you know, with these multi stripes, you can, I just feel, and you can feel your thumb pushing them absolutely together. So you have a nice fit there. I'll trim around that in a second with the X-Acto knife. Same thing, a little bit of back pressure. I'm not pulling it too much because I don't want to stretch the decal because it'll go, you know. So just a little bit of back pressure, just that it sits properly. these the if you want to call them real decals the ones from ADI that make all the teams I mean they just seem to uh, conform so much better to the helmet than some of these uh, uh, aftermarket decals because uh, these ones are thinner uh, I believe they're 16 or 18 mil uh, thickness where most of the, the aftermarket ones that are sold that you know I've, I've bought previously they're 20 mil and they seem to be thicker and they don't quite conform 
to some of these contours in the new helmet and the, the, the decal will lift, it'll, it'll ripple and then it's a bugger to get it to, to sit back down. So there we go, over that ridge in the back. And then I'll just, one thing I forgot was my scissors. I'll get my scissors. And I always give, you know, a little bit extra there. And try to get it to conform as best I can. And then there you go. Okay, so you can see already here it's, it's lifting a little bit. I mean, again, that's just the nature of these these speed helmets a little hard to get it to sit there's half or two-thirds here's the other stripe okay, same thing again get it so I can feel here and I'm almost pushing the two together with my thumb because I, I like to have an exact fit for these stripes. I don't like to see a gap in between or anything like that. it's sitting properly there's no bubbles I always watch for bubbles that's how I'll run my thumb along to make sure I get out all the bubbles I mean if you do get a little bubble and you don't want to lift the decal you can just take a, a sewing needle and just pick the bubble from the side just one little hole and then squeeze the air out and that seems to work I mean you won't even notice the hole I'm constantly heating, trying to keep these pliable because with the temperature change, the decals will shift. And there you go. So that's the stripes. That's part one. And I'll do part two uh, with the side decals.